Today's show is brought to you by our friends at Atticus Publishing. Be your own publisher. Turn your book ideas into reality. Hi, kids. I'm Storytime Pop, and welcome to the Storytime Pop Show. I'm so glad you came by to play. I love when my friends come by to play, and you're one of my friends. Are you ready to have fun? Let's see what we're going to do today. Magic Marker, show us what we're going to do today. Yay! It's storybook time! We love storybook time! Well, hi, kids! And thanks for stopping by for today's book! Today's book is The Bubblegum Bully. And it's written by Sandra Graham Logan. Are you ready? Okay, let's get started with today's book. The Tattler Bully When Travis was three years old, his grandma would take him to church. After Sunday school, there would be a 15-minute recess, then the church service would start. Christ Temple was a thriving church with a large membership. Most of the members were kind, loving, and very fond of little Travis. Being the youngest member, he got lots of attention. One day, Travis was seen standing next to an elderly woman. She was sitting on the end of the pew, next to the aisle, reading her Bible. Little Travis walked up to her and insisted she give him some gum. He couldn't pronounce the word gum. He said, you got gum? She looked up to see a cute little boy with a serious look on his face. You got gum in your purse? The woman replied, I don't think so, but I'll look, she said with a smile. After digging through her purse, she said, I'm sorry, sweetie. I don't seem to have any gum. He looked even more upset and asked if she had some gum in her car. She said, No, I don't have gum in my car. The woman felt badly she didn't have any gum to give little Travis. After looking in her purse again, she said, I have something you might like. Travis's eyes brightened and he was smiling. She opened a package of Hall's throat lozenges and gave him one. He snatched it and asked, You got gum for him? The woman looked around to see if someone was with him. He was completely alone. You got gum for him? He repeated with a mean expression on his face. She realized what Travis was up to and she said, Oh, okay, you can give this to him. He grabbed it from her and took off. Meet the Bully Travis Davis is a 13-year-old 5th grader at Broadbent Elementary School in Gary, Indiana. He was held back twice, making him the tallest and oldest in his class. Because of this, most of his classmates didn't really talk to Travis because they were scared of him. Travis's dad left him and his mother when he was five. The breakup caused Travis to be very rude and stuck up. Travis, being a stuck up, disrespectful boy, developed a bad reputation with teachers and he got bad grades. He was known as the Bubblegum Bully. Fortunately, his grandmother lived across town, and that's where he went after school until his mom got off work. Travis was very fortunate to have a grandma like his. He would go to church with her every Sunday, and they would read Bible scriptures together. She would always have something yummy prepared for Travis to eat after school, and always helped him with his homework. He was never bored when he was with Grandma. Travis's mom, Janetta, worked two jobs in order to provide for her only son, which is why he didn't see her much. Bully Encounter One day, 
Travis was at his grandma's house. While eating a snack and watching TV, he noticed a group of older boys in his grandma's yard. Travis's grandma had told him stories about these boys before. They were the troublemakers, the ones that went around door to door pulling pranks on the elderly folks in the neighborhood. Surprisingly, the boys didn't see Travis through the window. He watched as they walked through his grandmother's yard and stomped all over her flowers. Travis immediately got up from the table and stormed outside. Travis, where are you going? Come finish your sandwich, yelled Travis's grandma as he ran downstairs. I'll be back in a minute, grandma, Travis said, his voice stiffened. Once outside, he shouted, You jerks should get out of my grandma's yard before there's trouble. One of the boys stopped to ask, In what trouble exactly? Well, I'm going to call the police. That kind of trouble, Travis exclaimed. Oh, whatever, sighed one of the boys. Then they all left. Travis's grandma was standing on the front porch with a combination of disappointment and upset on her face. Travis, are you all right? Grandma asked. I'm fine, Grandma, Travis sighed. He was ticked off about his grandmother's flowers. Pink, red, and blue, now darkened and flat in the dirt. Do you want me to help you redo your flowers? Travis asked. No, baby, it's fine. It's too late in the summer anyways. Now go in and finish your snack before it gets cold. Shortly after, Travis's mom came to pick him up. When they got home, Travis's mom asked, How was school? Like always, he said it was good, then explained what happened at Grandma's house. I was upset. How could those boys stomp on her flowers like that? Travis shouted. Do you know how much patience, time, and effort it took for her to grow those? And his mom stopped him right in the middle of his sentence and said, Stay calm about it. No need to get worked up about something when there's nothing you can do. Those boys are still going to be troublemakers, no matter what you say to them. I know, Travis sighed. Now go take a shower and get ready for bed, Stinky, Travis's mom said. A couple of days later, on his way home, Travis walked by the corner store that he passed every day. He was just about to cross the street. He saw the same boys that had destroyed his grandma's flowers. But this time, there were a lot more boys with them. Hey, punk, the biggest of them said. The rest of the boys snickered. Travis knew something was up. So, you're the one that's going to steal all of us some bubble gum, and there won't be any trouble, understand? He seemed to be the leader, because he was doing most of the talking. Travis hesitated. He would never steal. But he also didn't want to get jumped. Fine, Travis quivered. He knew he shouldn't have agreed to do that. So, Travis walked into the store and stole enough bubble gum for everyone. Good boy, the short one mocked while patting Travis on the head. Travis was angry, mostly for not sticking up for himself. He knew that he shouldn't have done that. soon turned into a routine. On the same corner, every day, all of the same boys would surround him and force him to steal bubblegum. Until one day, all of that changed. The following week, Travis walked into the store, as usual. Good afternoon, Travis said nervously. No, no, you stop right there, said the man behind the cash register. The cashier grabbed Travis and led him to the back room. And when Travis saw the cameras, he knew he was in big trouble. Was this you? The cashier yelled at Travis. Um, no, sir. That's my, uh, my, my twin brother, sir. Both the cashier and Travis knew at this point he was lying. So he had no choice but to confess. It was me. I am completely sorry for what I did, and I promise it will never happen again. You know I was going to call the police on you. But I know your grandmother, and I know she did not raise you this way. The cashier scolded. I'll decide how you can work this off. Thank you very much, sir. Travis was relieved. 
So every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, Travis would go to the corner store and work off his debt by stocking the shelves, sweeping the floors, and doing various odd jobs. And by doing this, he would pay off all the bubble gum that he had stole. Some days, the boys would come up to Travis and call him a jailbird or cellmate. But Travis had thought about what his mom said to him, and he worked on keeping his cool. Travis's grandma did not know that he was at the store on certain days. He didn't tell her because he didn't know how she would react. The last thing he needed was for her to go tell his mom, who was already stressed enough. So he just told her that his teacher made him stay after school to work on late assignments. Travis was trying to get as far away from those boys as possible. But one day, after school, their paths crossed again. Oh, look, guys, it's the jailbird, the bully said. Travis tried to go around them, but they blocked his way. I told you, I can't steal anymore. I'm already in trouble. The bullies busted. One evening, when Travis was sweeping the back room of the store where he worked, he heard some commotion. He looked down the candy aisle and saw the neighborhood bullies being confronted by the store owner. Mr. Johnson. They were looking nervous and scared because they all got caught red-handed stealing bubble gum. The owner had his phone up to his ear, calling the police, when Travis rushed up to him and pleaded not to make the call. Travis asked Mr. Johnson would he consider allowing them to work at the store, doing whatever he needed done. He knew they would be grateful. So Travis also offered the bullies the opportunity to do some work around Mr. Johnson's house, too. The bullies listened in silence as Travis negotiated their sentence. The owner said, It's a deal. Then they all breathed a sigh of relief as they reached out to Travis with open arms of gratitude. Travis, you saved the day for these boys. Me and my wife really need a lot of work done around the house. Thank you for your courage and compassion. Well done. You are officially relieved of your duties here, and they all formed a group hug. Travis walked away feeling like an attorney who had just won a case. Classroom shenanigans. Travis was a horrible student. He would interrupt when the teacher was talking, play pranks on all of the students, and skip class. The highest grade that he ever got was a D minus. Travis had created a daily routine for the classroom. Every day at 2.32 p.m., the teacher, Mrs. Jennings, would leave the classroom to make copies of handouts for the next lesson. While she was gone, Travis would send Tiana, a classmate, to collect every student's bubblegum packs and put them into a bag. Travis only liked one brand and one flavor. He would only give you mercy if you gave him exactly what he wanted or if you would give him a 12 pack of gum. After making the rounds, Tiana counted 23 packs. That's 23, Travis menaced. Tiana reluctantly dropped her own pack into the bag, making 24. Travis snatched the bag from her, and he discovered someone put a stick of juicy fruit gum in his bag. Travis came unglued as he shouted, Who put this old folks gum in my bag? You know darn well that I don't chew this crap. Everyone had to act as if nothing was wrong when Mrs. Jennings came back into the room. She was surprised that all of her students were working quietly in their seats. Wow! Nice to see you all working quietly, Mrs. Jennings cheered. Now let's start on our reading lesson. Travis hated reading. To him it was useless. Boo! Reading sucks! Travis yelled across the room. He usually stayed in the corner of the classroom by all the coats so he could go through them and look for bubble gum. Travis, everyone likes reading. You just have to find the right book, the teacher replied. She told them the same thing every time they had a reading lesson. Everyone take out your books, 
We're reading until three o'clock. Travis was way behind the rest of the class. Everyone else was reading at a fifth grade level, while Travis was at a third grade level. He was still reading picture books. So instead of reading like he was supposed to be doing, he started drawing a really rude picture of Mrs. Jennings. Travis, aren't you supposed to be reading? The teacher stopped talking when she saw Travis's picture. A bit of Picasso with a splash of Van Gogh, wouldn't you say? Travis held up the picture. Travis, Miss Jennings scowled. I didn't want to say this, but I think you need a break from this classroom. I'm sending you to the principal's office. Actually, Mrs. Jennings, I think you need a break from this classroom because all you do is fill our heads with random junk that we don't ever need to use in life. Travis snapped back. It's funny that you would say that, Travis Anderson Davis, because you haven't passed the fifth grade for two years by doing what you're doing every day. And now you're saying it doesn't matter? Mrs. Jennings clapped back. Now, take all of your stuff and go to the principal's office. The principal's office was just another classroom to Travis. He would routinely go there at least once a week. It was usually from being disruptive in class or from chewing bubblegum when he wasn't supposed to. Well, hello, Travis, the office lady said sarcastically. I'm very surprised. It's been more than a week since I've seen you, she said. For some reason, Travis never knew the office lady's name, so that's what he called her. Travis sat down in the farthest chair away from the desk and started chewing on some bubble gum. After school, Travis was walking to his grandmother's house while trying to dodge the cracks on the sidewalk. It reminded him of the jingle when he was little. If you step on a crack, you'll break your mother's back. When Travis was about to pass the corner store, he was expecting to see the group of boys. Instead, he only saw one of the boys from the neighborhood with a dark brown purse running down the street. Help! That rascal stole my bag! A lady shouted from outside the store. As the boy was running past Travis, he took a huge wad of gum out of his mouth and threw it on the sidewalk. The boy fell as his foot stuck to the gum and the purse flung out of his hands into the air and into the owner's arms. Doggone it, Travis. You ruined my new shoes with that darn bubble gum. Oh, thank you so much, baby, the lady cheered. No problem, ma'am, Travis said. Here's five dollars. Go buy some more bubble gum, young man, she cried. Parent-teacher conference. Parent-teacher conferences were coming up soon. This was the one time of year Travis was afraid of. Last year, Travis acted like he had the flu just to avoid parent-teacher conference. It's usually Travis's grandma who goes with him to his conferences. But this year, Travis's mom was able to get off work in order to go to Travis's school. The day came for parent-teacher conferences, and Travis had butterflies in his stomach. Mama, I don't feel so good, Travis said to his mom as they were waiting in line to go in the class. Your son hasn't been doing the best in my classroom, Mrs. Jennings said. He has been failing most of his classes, except P.E. When Travis's mother heard this, she was very disappointed. Well... Is there anything I could do to bring up his grade level? She asked. It's more of a behavioral issue. He, uh, Mrs. Jennings stopped at the sound of Travis hollering at the top of his lungs. Oh, my mouth! Travis yelled while holding his hand over his mouth. He was getting up to go to the bathroom when he stumbled and accidentally knocked over his desk, revealing all the chewed bubblegum stuck underneath his desk, homework, and failed test papers he was hiding inside. Oh my, Jesus, Travis's mom quivered. She was so shocked about all the mess in one desk that it was overwhelming. 
Travis was yelling and howling and screaming in pain. Mrs. Jennings, I truly apologize, but I need to get my son to a dentist immediately, she said sternly. As they were rushing out of the classroom, everyone waiting in line stared at Travis with shocked expressions as his mom and him rushed down the hallways. As Travis's mom frantically drove around to find a walk-in dentist, Travis was screaming in pain nonstop. When they finally found a dentist, they were just about to close. Wait, I need you to help my son, please, Travis's mom yelled at Libby at the front desk. He has active cavities, said the dentist. It will take a few hours, but I will cut out the cavities and then seal the teeth with fillings. He will have silvers for a few weeks because of how severe the cavities are. I will prescribe an antibiotic for him. He can't eat solid foods for about a week. I recommend soft foods like applesauce, bread, liquids, and lots of water, but absolutely no sweets. Thank you so much, Doctor, Travis's mom sighed. Sweet Revenge While Travis was out of school, Tiana and some of his classmates asked to meet with Mrs. Jennings and Mr. Benson, the principal, privately. Travis has forced us to give him our bubblegum for months, Mr. Benson, Tiana said. He has harassed, threatened, and bullied us all, especially when Mrs. Jennings leaves the classroom. Since Travis is gone, we thought we should come and tell you. They all started telling their experiences with Travis. It seems like we've grown into a major problem, said the principal. But if we all stick together, we could put an end to this bullying happening in Miss Jennings' classroom. Okay, here's the plan. Next Monday, Travis returned to school, but something just didn't feel right. As he got on the bus, he noticed everyone on the bus chewing bubblegum and blowing bubbles. Even the bus driver was blowing bubbles too. He quietly sat down to the sound of popping ringing in the air. When he got off the bus, everyone rushed him to school. What is going on? Travis asked. He walked into the school, only to find bare hallways. He started walking to his classroom when he saw Mrs. Jennings blowing a huge wad of bubble gum. Welcome back, Travis, she said as she was smacking on her bubble gum. Uh, hi, uh, Mrs. J Jennings, Travis stuttered. Everyone is so excited that you're back, she cheered. Oh, okay, he muttered. When he walked into the back of the classroom, everyone shouted, Welcome back, Travis! Travis was very surprised to see everyone in the classroom chewing bubblegum. They were grinning in a way that made Travis feel nervous. The bell rang and they began class. Throughout the day, Travis couldn't get over the strange feeling something wasn't right. All he could hear was chewing and popping and smacking. After a few hours, the bell rang for lunch. Everyone dashed through the door and down the hall to the lunchroom. At lunch, Travis noticed people whispering and pointing at him. Were they really that happy that he came back? It was time for recess and everyone ran outside earlier than Travis. Mrs. Jennings called all the students on the playground. You guys know the plan? She asked. Yes, Mrs. Jennings! They all shouted. When Travis came outside, he didn't see anyone, but he heard everyone. He could hear smacking and popping all around him. Suddenly, Tiana came out from behind the slide and blew a gigantic bubble in his face. Then quicker than lightning, students tackled him to the ground. He felt warm, sticky, slimy stuff all over his body. He was struggling to move, but he could not escape. The sticky mess. All the kids were laughing at him, not even realizing his tears streaming from his eyes. You want some more bubble gum? The kids shouted. His mouth was in pain from the pressure from the gum on his face. He could barely hear the bell rang as all the kids ran inside and left him outside alone. When Travis went back into class, he looked like a creature from the bubblegum factory. He 
he broke down in tears on his knees in front of the whole class. When he could finally get the bubblegum off his mouth, he said, I was wrong for bullying you for all the bubblegum. I'm sorry, and I will never be rude to any of you guys again. Please forgive me. If you do decide to forgive me and offer me gum, please make sure it's sugar-free. The End So what did you think about today's book? Did you learn any lessons in this book? I hope so. I hope you learn the importance of never bullying anybody and always being kind to everyone. And also, the importance of being respectful and doing your work at school. It's for the benefit of not only you, but everyone. I hope you enjoyed today's book. I want to say a great big thank you to Sandra Graham Logan for this wonderful book about the bubblegum bully.